everyone, I'm Steve from Number 12 Cider. This is my business partner, Colin. We're uh, gonna teach uh, today about back sweetening. What, what is that all about, Colin? So back sweetening is uh, where you wanna take a cider and you want it to be a little bit sweeter, uh, but you also wanna add carbonation to it. Uh, and it tends to be uh, sounding like a fairly simple process, which it can be, uh, but it's a lot of different ways to get there. So we're gonna attempt today to teach you how to back sweeten in uh, using one method and, uh, and mention a few others as well. Sounds good, let's do it. So the question is, what can you use to back sweeten your cider? And the answer to that is anything with sugar, really. Uh, even some things that don't have sugar but they taste like sugar. But examples of things that we've used for back sweetening are honey, syrup, Sugar, brown sugar, any other thoughts, Colin? White sugar, honey, uh, fruit juice, uh, fruit concentrate, apple juice concentrate. Mm -hmm. um, it's anything with sugar. Uh, it'll all work. Yeast loves it all. And these, these uh, all can make your cider taste delicious and different or unique. But there's one issue. The reason we haven't taught this issue yet in our videos is because when you're working with live yeast, uh, that yeast always wants to eat the sugar, always. You can't stop live yeast from going after its food. And uh, so until and unless you find a way to control that yeast from eating the sugar, whenever you add something with sugar in it, eventually the yeast will eat it and cause reaction. Here's the reaction. So, so here's the dilemma is <clears throat> if I've added sugar to my cider and I've capped the bottle and there's still live yeast in there, I have a problem because if I wait long enough, that yeast will, will metabolize the sugar and it becomes a dry cider again. So I've defeated the purpose. What I've really just done then is added carbonation but I've, and maybe a little bit of extra alcohol but I've not attained my sweeter cider because now the sugar has been metabolized again. Yeah, that's right, Colin. And it will and continue we, and continue that cycle. It won't, it won't, I won't get anywhere. And that could get dangerous. We did uh, a how to bottle and carbonate video uh, and we put a measured dose of sugar uh, in, the, in the cider that went into this bottle so that it would carbonate in the bottle. If we put too much sugar in it, that could cause the bottle to explode or to lose its cap and uh, and so, and just, so we, let's see how we did. <laughs> <laughs> let's hope we were, we usually so, double check our calculations at these moments, so, so let's see how we did. First yeah. of all, if it gives off a psst, then that means it's got carbon dioxide gas in it from bottle conditioning. And if it, if it's overflows the bottle, then we probably put too much in there. So and let's if, see. If the cap hits the ceiling, we know we put too much. Okay. No, that, that it was, it was a nice little a spritz coming out. Um, Sound like a, a, a nice measured amount. It should be a little bit of you carbonation. You take a look at that pouring into the glass. Now we've got a nicely carbonated uh, product that uh, if we had add, added twice the amount of sugar, uh, I, can, I can assure you that uh, that yeast would have fermented that sugar out and the, the bubbles would have gone right over the top of the bottle and it would not be a nicely carbonated product. So now the trick is this is all all the sugar has been carbonated or metabolized. So this is now a dry cider again. So it's not sweet. It's just a little bit carbonated. So we have that issue again. How do we get it carbonated and still have some sweetness left? That's the trick. Well, let, let, let me uh, let me add something to this, Colin. Uh, you can sweeten it by adding your sweet thing right now. Okay, you've done what we suggested you did. Now you're about to drink it, okay? Put a little sugar in it. Pour a little orange juice in it or cherry juice sure. or whatever. That's one way to do it, right? Sure, that would work. That's traditional. Um, I, I heard, I have not been there, but I heard that's a tradition in England where oftentimes they'll take a little black currant juice, yeah. fresh black currant juice, pour it in their cider. They, they have a name for that? A snake bite, I Snake bite? Yeah, yeah, something like so that. So yeah. that is one way to back sweeten your product and there's no danger of it of it re-fermenting because you're drinking it right away. Right. So that's the first method 
of back right. sweetening without any complication, right? Okay, drink so, it right away. So let me let me throw another <laughs> method at you, which is kind of similar. It's that drink it fast method. Um, this carbonation process, this bottle conditioning, is about 10 days to two weeks. So that's been sitting for us even longer than that. Uh, but if we added sweetness to that bottle and we let it go for a few days, we'd get a little bit of carbonation out of it and there would still be some sweetness that hadn't been yeah. uh, taken over by the yeast. So if we drink it fairly fast or say put it in the fridge and just drink it out of the fridge, we might have a little bit of carbonation, we might have a little bit of sweetness, and it's kind of that perfect balance. But it's not a very scientific method. It's just sort of, ah, drink it and enjoy it. It's got a little carb, a little sweet, and go for it. Yeah, so, uh, and eventually even in the refrigerator, that yeast, it's still alive, is just moving slowly. It will eventually ferment it out. So over a period of time, you're gonna have the same problem. So other ways to back sweeten that are stable are one of the things you can do is we've, we've had questions about this, pasteurize. Uh, what does it mean to pasteurize? It means to heat the product to a point where all the, the bacteria, namely the yeast, gets you know, killed. And, uh, and that, uh, that in, in the case of a bottled product, that could involve partially fermenting it to the point where it has the carbonation you like and the residual sweetness you like, and then pasteurizing it. There, there's some complicated issues with this, though. We've done it, yeah. we, as we've done everything. Yeah, and I actually like that method, but you do have to be very careful about how much sugar you add, how hot you're pasteurizing it. You don't want to go too hot and cook your cider. Uh, you don't want to have too much pressure in the bottle because you'll blow, you'll break bottles in the hot water. Uh, so that's a that's another good method, but it's a little bit more involved. Probably an issue for another video. And we're not teaching that method today. It, but I will tell you, if you take a bunch of bottles and you pasteurize them after you partially carbonated them, some of them will explode. <laughs> <laughs> you Wear your safety glasses. Yeah. Been there, done that. Okay. So, you can try it in a sauna. You can try it in a, a hot pot on the stove. Yeah. You can some of your bottles will explode yeah. and that's dangerous. That's why we're not teaching that today. Uh, so another possible method uh, related to this idea would be a sterile filtration. Uh, and that's a tricky one. Certainly a, you know, someone that's uh, making cider at home is probably not gonna have the right equipment. Uh, even many larger scale operations don't have the right kind of sterile, sterilization equipment. Uh, it's, a, it's a long process. Basically what it would be is you'd be running this cider through a filter a very fine filter, it would leave the yeast behind. So the cider coming out the other side would be, uh, would have no yeast in it. And once you've made sure that there's no yeast in there, then you're good to add as much sweetness as you want. It'll stay there forever. Well, the issues with that, Colin, first of all, if such a filter is expensive. Second of all, you can't do that to a carbonated product. So if you, if you do have uh, a filter that will work for sterile filtration, you have to do that to the still product before you carbonate it. And then afterwards, you have to force carbonate it because you can't put yeast back in. <laughs> Which is another, yeah, so it's another process. It's long and arduous. Uh, you could also, let's see, there's a, there's a chemical method you chemical could, method. You could treat yeah. a chemical method where you'd put uh, maybe a combination of sorbate and sulfite into the cider uh, with the intention of uh, either killing the yeast or in the case of sorbate, you would uh, basically freeze the yeast or uh, make it so it's not going to be uh, working any longer. And that's the same thing, uh, Colin, right? You can't yeah. do that to a carbonated product. Right. You you're going to kill the yeast before you carbonate, and then you have to force carbonate. Yeah. And we might do a video on force carbonating. Uh, that, that's a lot of people do that. Home kegging uh, is a good, is a great way to to advance your cider making uh, skills. Yeah. So maybe we'll do a video on force carbonating someday. That's what we do. That's what most production facilities do. And that's an easy way to to uh, to deal with this. But today, yes, yeah, so this leads us to <laughs> leaving all those other methods behind. What are we going to do today? Well, today we're thinking about. Uh, maybe what's the simplest method uh, to carbonate and make your cider sweet at the same time. And that would be using non-fermentable sugars. Mm -hmm. uh, and the concept there is we're going to basically take 
a little bit of regular sugar, whether it's honey, syrup, juice, whatever, sugar, and we're going to use that for the bottle conditioning like we did here. That's going to be the part we use for carbonation. And then the non-fermentable sugar, which the yeast won't metabolize, will be left over as the sweetness yeah, yeah. element. So in, the, in that context, we, sh we had a video how to bottle and carbonate that is doing that exact same thing that we did in our video, how to bottle and carbonate, except adding a non-fermentable sugar that won't ferment out and will keep the, some kind of sweetness in the cider when it's done, right? All right, let's try it. All right. Okay, we're back. So uh, the question is, why are we talking about this method, using non-fermentable sugars? The reason is because this is the one method we think people can easily do at home without special equipment. You don't need a pasteurizer. You don't need to be kegging or force carbonating in your home. Or filtering. Or filtering with an expensive filter. Or you can extra chemicals. You can do this with the same equipment we've talked about in our previous couple of videos. And so let's get, let's cut to the chase here, Colin. Okay. How are we gonna figure out what we're gonna do here? So there's two kind of main steps to this process. And the first one would be to decide how much sweetness we're gonna want in our finished cider. Uh, we'll save the bottle conditioning part until after, but our first determination is how sweet do we want it? And uh, for you and I, uh, we generally like drier ciders, so if we add sweetness at all, it's usually pretty small amounts. But uh, people like, have their preferences, so uh, we generally uh, would refer to the uh, American Cider Association scale, uh, which is kind of accepted in our industry. Uh, it's a pretty general scale. It has a um, dry, semi-dry, semi-sweet, and sweet. So just kind of four ranges of sweetness, ranging from dry down to, sem uh, down to sweet. Uh, and so we probably today would go with something, I'm guessing it'd be in the semi-sweet or semi-dry category, something kind of in the middle we'd be shooting for. Uh, but we're going to do it based on taste and what we like, which is what we'd recommend you do the first few times you try this. Uh, so what does that look like, Steve, if we have our well, non sugar? Well, what it looks like is, first of all, you're going to take a measured amount of cider. Uh, that would be a container that has that you know exactly how much is there, okay? Call it a cup, two cups, a pint, whatever, something where you know how much cider is there. And you could, you could even do just a five gallon batch if you wanted to, just do your whole batch right into a, a bucket. Right? So, and then you're gonna mix in this non-fermentable sweetener. This is one example um, uh, of a non-fermentable su sweetener. Uh, I was looking at this package, it says it can be used as a substitute for sugar on a one-to-one -one basis. So in this case, you might use about as much of this non-fermentable sweetener in your product as you would use sugar. Uh, th this is another example of a, of a non-fermentable sugar. It's uh, from the stevia leaf, and it's known not to, not to ferment with yeast. So, and this says uh, that it is uh, more it's stronger than, than sugar uh, and it suggests that one-eighth of a teaspoon equals one teaspoon of sugar. So if you're going to just mix the, the sweetener into your container of, of cider as Colin suggests, you want to start uh, incrementally, okay? Mm -hmm. you, you don't want to, <laughs> you can't take it out once you put it in. So you're going to put a little bit of this non-fermentable sugar, whichever you decide, and you're going to taste it. And, and you're going to keep doing that until you think it tastes just right. Okay? When I suggested earlier that we would use a smaller container, that requires some math. Okay? So if you use one pint and you, and you use that to, to, to mix in and decide how much sugar you want in your product, then you got to multiply that pint by the number of pints in your overall container and add that non-fermentable sugar. Sound right? Sounds right, yeah. And, um, all we're doing is mixing it until we think it tastes good or tastes That's right. perfect, right? So you just add a little bit more. I think I want a little more, a little more, et cetera. Uh, and in the end, you'll have the cider exactly the way you want it at the sweetness level you want. Okay, and then... So that would be step one. Yeah, and then we do what we did in our bottling video, right? It, and that is uh, we're going we're gonna to need to add fermentable sugar as well, right? 
So now, now let's pretend we have our, I'll just use this example. We have the sweetness on our bottle or in our cider exactly the way we want it. We're just, we just need to add enough regular sugar now to be able to draw out some carbonation or bottle condition within the bottle. Uh, so now it's a little bit, uh, again, it's, there's a question as to how much carbonation do you want, just like there's a question about how much sugar you want for sweetness. Uh, you know, we think of it as a small amount of carbonation would be something called perlant, uh, using some French terms here, by is the way. Is it perlant or is it pétillant? Perlant is the small amount. Oh, really? Uh, how do you spell that? P <laughs> P-E-R-L-A-N-T, I think. Okay. And then you have yes. kind of a medium what? sparkle would be pétillant. Pétillant. That's right. And, oui, then you, oui. and then you have just like a champagne level of sparkle, which is a high sparkle. So uh, today we're going to do, or what we would do as an example would be uh, the pétillant, which is just a medium sparkle. Uh, and just from experience and research, I would know that uh, that would be something in the neighborhood of about 30 to 40 grams per gallon of sugar, 30, 30 to 40 grams of sugar per gallon of cider uh, would get us in the bottle a medium sparkle or pétillon. And that's our target. Well, that's good to know. See, now you've got some exact measure. It, you know, this is not exact though. You, you have to, to really advance in this, you have to get used to using a hydrometer uh, and measuring uh, the amount of sugar in the, in the liquid. This is an example of a hydrometer. Sure. And this is some cider that we would use. And once you learn how to use a hydrometer for measuring the amount of, uh, of sugar, then you can be more specific on this. But Colin has made literally, we've made hundreds upon hundreds of different kinds of cider. And 30 to 40 grams per gallon for a medium sparkle. It's pretty foolproof. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So. Uh, to sum it up, right now we're going to back sweeten using uh, non-fermentable sugar by adding this non-fermentable sugar to the cider to our taste, whatever we like. If it's really sweet or just a little bit sweet, we're going to add it incrementally until we've got to that just right point. And then we're going to add our bottle conditioning sugar at, if you want a medium sparkle, 30 to 40 grams. Yeah. And a light sparkle, maybe 10 grams. A heavy sparkle, maybe 70, or maybe a little less. And then you bottle, just as we showed in our bottling video. Yep. Bada bang, bada bang, bada bang, bada bang, bada bang, bada bang. There we go. Good luck. Yeah, so this so, is a common misunderstanding of cider for novices. Using uh, a juice that is high in sugar uh, will not make it a sweet cider. It will make it a high alcohol cider. Uh, and adding sugar um, before you bottle it won't make it sweet either. Uh, it will just uh, increase the amount of food for the yeast. And, and, and the more we get into this topic, it feels like it becomes more and more complicated. We started this video thinking, Oh, we'll just quickly run through how to back sweeten cider. And uh, in the end, it's not quite that easy. There are some, we try to keep it simple in the sense of uh, one simple method you can do at home. Uh, but it turns out there's a lot of ways to do it and they seem to get a little more and more complicated with each method. And if you want to use those favorite sugars that we use all the time, your honey, your cherry juice, then you're going to have to go to one of the other methods we've talked about uh, but didn't you know get in depth about which is pasteurizing or sterile filtering or chemical using stabilization. chemical stabilization yeah. and in in those cases you're probably going to be force carbonating you're going to be kegging and force carbonating at home so that's the way to really get to yeah. using any sugar for uh for cider making right right that's the next step but yep hopefully we showed you a way today to to uh, do it simply at home and to have some fun with it and enjoy it. That's the idea. Awesome.